ultra light, or ultra comfort. These are the two ends of the spectrum for when it comes to deciding your backpacking gear. Find a happy balance between the two of them are going to maximize your comfort. Believe it or not, going ultra light is going to actually make you very comfortable while you're hiking, but you're not going to be so comfortable while you're camp. Sticking an ultra comfort setup is going to make you uncomfortable while you're hiking, so finding a happy balance in between those two will help you have the best time while you're out on your next big backpacking adventure. Today, we're going to go over the big four backpacking items and see what areas you should either go ultra light or ultra comfort, and the places you should find a nice happy medium in between the two of those. My name is Dakota Coburn. I'm an adventure photographer who really likes backpacking gear. So let's get started with this today. Big thanks to everyone who subscribed to our last little bit. I just cracked over a thousand subscribers. It's unbelievable. It's been a lot of fun creating these videos and engaging with you guys down in the comments. Comment down below, what do you guys like? Are you more of an ultralight backpacker or you're more of an ultra comfort backpacker? Now let's have a look at the big four items. For anyone that doesn't know, let's talk about what the big four items are. Just get that out of the way. So the big four items are your tent, your backpack, your sleeping pad, and your sleeping bag slash sleeping quilt. Those are some of the most important gear that you bring with you while you're on trail. And people commonly refer to those ones because some of the biggest areas if you substitute out for a different item, you can save weight or increase comfort. Now you know what the big four items are, let's talk about them. So first off, let's talk about backpacks. With my gear, I'm gonna be talking about my exact items, but it kind of carries a wide, broad spectrum between gear and just the things I look for if I wanted to go for an ultra comfort versus an ultra light setup and elements to think about when you're trying to decide on which gear to bring with you. For a backpack to be considered a comfort backpack, it has to check off these four boxes for me. It has to comfortably carry a lot of weight well. It has to have ample amount of storage. It's gotta have easy access to water somehow while I'm hiking on trail, such as be able to grab my smart water bottles out of the side pockets. It has to be reliable. That's why this one, the Selfless 5500, has been my comfort backpack of choice for the last few years. I've had this backpack for roughly four years and it's been extremely reliable for me. I haven't had any issues with it. It's showing lots of wear and tear though, that being said, but I can rely on it. I find easy to grab a smart water bottle out of the side. The large pockets on the outside, I'm able to fit lots of extra gear and goodies with me. I'm able to strap things down with all the tired down straps. If the loom stays on the backpack, it's able to transfer all the weight into my hips very comfortably. I've had this thing for long enough that I've previously known the Southwest 3400. Big fan of this backpack. And here we are on the other end of the spectrum with an ultralight backpack. This wasn't exactly your true ultralight backpack, but it's half a pound lighter than my other backpack. Well, I look for an ultralight backpack is that I have to be able to move really quick with it and it has to be light. What I mean by moving really quick with it is that something I'm able to trail run and boogie along quite quickly. With the brand new vest shoulder straps, it holds the weight really well and doesn't shift around too much for me. But with the downsides of a backpack like this, you re rely totally on the brand new vest style shoulder strap. I've broken one of these clips before, which is actually the weakness of the backpack. And if one of them breaks, the backpack is kind of hooped. <laughs> so it's not the most reliable thing ever because everyone had it for a few months and I've already had an issue that could have ruined the backpack. It doesn't have the most storage, but when you're carrying an ultra light load, you don't really need that much storage for it. It's only a 40 liter backpack, but could be even smaller than that, to be honest. It's impossible to grab water bottles out the side from over here. That's why you have the pockets on the front, but I just find it's a little finicky with that, unless I had like some sort of soft flask up front. If I want to cover a lot of distance in a short amount of time, this is the backpack of choice for it, for me while I'm on trail. So my ultra light tent in my last video was actually my ultra comfort tent. You're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit to see what I'm talking about between my two tents. So in behind me for my ultra light tent, I have my Durston X-Med Pro 2 Plus. It's a Dynamis trucking pole tent. Typically, ultra light tents are gonna be a trekking pole single wall tent and they're gonna be lacking interior living space. So if it's gonna be a really rainy day you're, and you're gonna be stuck inside your tent all day, that's gonna suck. Having condensation run down the walls, not having a lot of area to go, could feel a little claustrophobic after a few hours or trying to hide out the rain. With trucking pole tents, it can be a little bit trickier to set them up. They can be a lot more finicky, and if, it's, if you just want to toss it and set it up, it can take a little bit longer. I've set up my X-Bed enough to know that it is a little bit of a pain to set them up. The ground has to be level. If your campground's uneven, it's going to take a few minutes to get everything set up just right if you want to have that perfect pitch consistently. If you're going for a lightweight tent, it typically isn't going to be as strong as a more comfort tent. Dynamo has awful puncture resistance, so if you poke it, with a sharp stick or something, it typically means it's gonna go through, such as that's happened here on my X-Mid. Big advantage of a lot of ultralight tents, you set them up all in one piece. I don't know if any tents where you don't set them up with the fly first, but that's how they all set up with single wall tents. That's one thing that's very nice that you don't need to worry about when it's raining or set up your tent. Your stuff will not get wet on the inside. That's huge. So with an ultra comfort tent, for example here, this is like a, a large freestanding tent. There's some things I actually really miss about it because I don't bring it on trail ever anymore. Some of the things I miss about it is just being able to pick it up, move it around if you don't like your camp. Having that flexibility of a freestanding is pick it up and shift it around. It's very nice if you realize you don't like your campsite or you find there's a rock or something nasty underneath you. You don't have to collapse your whole tent. You can just pick it up and move it. 
One thing I miss about free sand tents is stargazing at night. If it's a nice night out, you can just rip your fly off and then just stare up at the stars while you go to sleep. Now I wear contacts, so I have to toss on my glasses to be able to do it. Something that's really cool and a special part of backpacking that I love to do is just staring up at the night sky. I miss it enough that I'm looking into another free sanding tent, so I'm have the ability to do that. Going more ultralight though, you could cowboy camp and then you're guaranteed to stare at the stars all night. During the summers here on Vancouver Island, we get a lot of bugs up in the mountains. No bueno, no mosquito kind of situation, you know? Comfort tents too, you typically have a lot of cool features with them, such as like giant pockets on the inside to store your stuff, or having a diffused piece of plastic up at the top where you can shine your headlamp down and it diffuses the light, creating a nice ambient glow inside there. Comfort tents are gonna have a lot of space for you to hang out in there if the weather's bad. It'll be a little bit more bearable, especially if there's two of you inside of there. And that's another thing too, with a comfort tent, they're gonna be a lot bigger. Most of them are you're able to fit two people. A lot of ultralight tents are only really meant for one person, unless you get one of the big granddaddy ones, that's the X-Men Pro 2 Plus, or the Z-Packs, I forget what it's called, it's one of the weird sticks on the end. That one looks really cool, but you can fit two people in those, but those things are very expensive. So an area that I've been consistently offering more and more for a comfort rather than going ultra light is a sleeping pad. I don't think people fully understand how important it is to have good quality sleep at night. If you have a bad night's sleep while well, in the backcountry, you're just gonna have an awful time. When you're in the backcountry, it's not the time to start testing around with weird fast or sleep deprivation things. You wanna have a good time. Having a good sleep, is very important. Here I have the REI Helix. Now, it is very heavy, 800 gram range versus my Neo Air X Lite is in the 400 gram range. Now, regardless if you go from an ultra comfort pad such as this one or an ultra light pad such as the X Lite, both of them aren't gonna be very reliable. I just recently had to replace my REI Helix, which is a bit of a story trying to get it replaced. I'll leave that for another video. It was not very straightforward getting this replaced as a Canadian. Getting this shipped to me in Canada, going down to the United States with an issue and going into an REI store and then trying to get it replaced. It was not a straightforward process. It caused a lot of headache. I'm gonna leave it at that. That's for another video. And with my Thermarest X Lite, it had two small rips near the valve and it also was having, and when I was just filming my videos today, the valve was burst on me from leaving it half in the sun, half in the shade. So yeah. I just started the warranty process roughly an hour ago and I'm waiting to find out what's gonna happen with that. To be continued. Now sleeping on something like the REI Helix, I'm able to sleep through most of the night through with it. I do wake up a couple times to toss and turn around. Now with the Thermarest X Lite, I do not sleep well at that thing at all. I wake up every hour or so, have toss and flip around. My arms are constantly falling asleep on me. I have a lower back issue and it causes me quite a bit of pain in that area. So I'm not a big fan of it. It's extremely light. I'm just going for a short backpacking trip. Maybe I'll bring that one. Most of the time though, I'm bringing the REI Helix just for that extra comfort. The weight penalty is worth it for me. I'd love to find something in the happy medium ground, but that doesn't really exist yet. For the majority of you out there, I think going to a comfortable sleeping pad is really an increase your, you're gonna have a better time about backpacking if you can find that, rather than trying to get the lightest off with your sleeping pad. I think with your shelter, that's a better way to shave weight. If you wanna spend some money on something that's gonna be lighter. That kind of sucks. Has air mattresses for you. They aren't very reliable. All balloons can pop. <laughs> One thing for ultra light gear too, it's very expensive. As you can see, the, my head's surrounded by Dyneema and my wallet is lightweight. Still so poly and nylon tents can be a lot cheaper than Dyneema tents. Pretty much consistently across the board unless you're getting like a Hilleberg tent. Those are very expensive. Let's not advantage of going comfort gear. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. REI Helix, I picked up at roughly $110, where I know the X Lite is north of $200 now. So it costs quite a bit of money. Okay, now we're in our last topic sleeping bags or sleeping quilts. Ultra light, ultra comfort. This is a little bit of a tricky one to answer because quite often the lighter option is actually the comfortable option with sleeping quilts. I like having a, a quilt because it feels just like a blanket at home. I can toss it off, flop all around with it. I want pad straps on, I can secure it, make it warm. But with sleeping bag, I feel quite tight and restrictive and I feel claustrophobic in there. And I sometimes wake up in a little bit of panic. I haven't used one in years. Most of my time I'm with my sleeping quilt. That being said, you have to pick something that's to be comfortable for the temperatures you're gonna be in, or it's just, you're gonna put yourself in danger or just have an absolutely miserable time during the night. And now you have to look at the cost. Nice thing about quilts, not so much now as they used to be, but they're cheaper than your traditional down sleeping bag. But if you look at a synthetic sleeping bag, that's always gonna be the cheapest option. You're gonna pay for it in the weight penalty. So my take is for whatever you can afford, get something for the temperature rating first and then start shaving the weight by increasing the, the cost for what your sleeping installation is gonna be. Something that you could look at if you're looking for a lightweight and good cost efficiency is a 
the synthetic quilt. Actually can double up for your extreme winter camping. So if you have one of those, you can double up those. You can use a 40 degree synthetic quilt. It would be great for in conjunction with an extreme winter setup. And plus you can use it during the summer months. So it's kind of a double hitter. Just some food for thought. With sleeping quilts, it's gotta be comfortable. I'm pretty much always bringing a quilt. I haven't used this thing in years unless I'm doing some deep winter camping. Even then it's not quite warm enough. So I need something new for some deep winter camping coming up this year. Make sure to subscribe for that. Canadian winter camping content coming up this summer. This summer. Summer. Winter. It is Canada, so it can't snow 12 months of the year. Not where I live though. Something with an ultra comfort sleeping bag. Some of bags typically have hoods as well, which is very nice. You don't have to worry about drafts or wear a down hoodie at night when you're in a quilt and wrap that over your head. It is an advantage. Another way to think of this, if your ultra comfort is synthetic and your ultra light is down, with down, if you're worried about moisture and your very humid conditions, it can be a little bit more difficult with dealing with down for synthetic material. If you're somewhere where you're doing water crossings, synthetic might be a good option to look at because if you would fall through the water or soak through your bag, Synthetics are where you want to go, but for the majority of the time, for most of us sane people, down's the best option. So to recap the video, what am I actually bringing with me? Well, I'm bringing an ultra comfort backpack, ultra light tent, ultra comfort sleeping pad, and ultra light sleep insulation. 50-50 for both of them. For me, going light as possible on trail while actually being able to sleep comfortably at night are the things I look for when I'm trying to go either ultra light or ultra comfort. That's my overall philosophy while I'm out backpacking, which I feel like most people are as well. If you're a big gear nut like me and you're trying to decide what to do, kind of usually typically in between that when we light as possible and as comfortable as possible. For you and your budget, just try to figure out where you fit in between there with all the areas and more time out on trail the more you'll figure out what are your needs and wants are if you guys enjoy this video check out on the sides over here for this is my ultra light setup and this is my ultra comfort setup if you haven't seen those two videos yet go check those ones out see ya